coming up. There's a lot of things that we can manage, and those are the things that we try real hard to put effort into. And so we're looking at how do we how do we run the same number of cows with less labor, or how do we run more cows with the same amount of labor? Beef genetics expert Lee Leachman dissects the three biggest challenges to cow-calf profitability, next on The American Rancher. I'm Pam Minnick, and welcome to The American Rancher. Today, we're taking a close look at the three biggest challenges to cow-calf profitability and how producers are meeting those challenges. Those include feed costs, labor, and reproduction. In this first segment, genetics expert Lee Leachman explains how genetics affect feed costs. Well, we all know that we're in a time of uh, recent rapid inflation. Uh, we hear a lot about egg costs, but gosh, think about how the costs have gone up on our cow-calf operations. I mean, at, at, at every level, our machinery, all the different things we pay for is higher today. And, and of course, corn is higher. And, and we're into a time where, you know, we used to think that, that corn was going to be under $3. And then for a while, we thought it was going to be to 4 to $5. And now I'm afraid we're into a period where it's going to be 6 to $7. And we're just going to have to live with that. And of course, as corn goes up, it drags up the cost of purchased hay. Um, you know, underlying that higher corn cost is higher machinery cost, higher fuel costs that we're experiencing if we're putting up our own feed. And I think all of us are recognizing and we're starting to pay close attention to the fact that, that our feed costs throughout the year are a big part of our cost structure. And if we look at what we've done with cattle over the last 20, 30, 40 years, We've made them bigger. We've made them grow faster. That's been favorable. That's why we did it. Uh, but we've also made them eat a lot more. And, uh, you know, those of you that are out there on the feed grounds of the, of the United States, feeding out winter feed to cows and even maybe to your bulls, you're really paying attention to how much that costs and how much feed it takes to get those cattle over the winter. And uh, we get a lot of people say, gosh, we, we've just got to put that under control. You know, obviously, one way to do that is change your calving season, try to rely more on stockpiled feeds and, and calve when green grass, grass shows up. But there are some genetic ways to do that. And so as we look at it from Leachman Cattle, we started measuring feed intake a long time ago. We started in 2007. And we've now collected feed intake on over 40,000 animals we have, I think, the largest pedigreed database for feed efficiency. It goes across all breeds here in North America. And we can literally tell you where an animal ranks on, on, on feed intake requirement. And, and of course, the differences are astounding. You've probably, if you've seen any of our programs before, you've seen this graphic where we show these two bulls and one of them was eating 42 pounds of dry matter a day and the other one was only eating 17, and they basically were gaining the same amount per day, and they were at the same yearling weight. So we have animals with the same output, but drastically different feed requirements. If you're concerned about feed costs, buy bulls with genetics and lower feed intake EPDs. That feed intake, the higher the number is, the more they eat. The lower the number is, the less they eat. And we print that on every bull we sell. You know, the other place where you can impact feed costs is to look at the cow size, right? The bigger a cow is, the more she's going to eat in general. That's why we print a cow size or a mature cow weight EPD on every bull we sell. And so those two EPDs can really help you select a cow herd that's not going to lead to higher and higher feed costs. I mean, if you think about where we were 20 years ago, you were feeding a lot less per head per day than you are today, and it costs less on top of that. So now we're into high feed costs, and we want to find the cattle that eat less per day, and we have the tools to help you do it. Joining us now on the program is Kelly Johnson. He's a Leachman customer from outside of Grand Island, Nebraska. Welcome to the show, Kelly. Well, thanks, Lee. Kelly, we've talked a little bit about the challenge of feed costs and, and higher feed costs. Uh, tell me how you're coping with that in your operation. Well, 
we like to utilize all the natural resources we have. And so one of the things that jumped out at me was, uh, you know, he always had some thinner cattle or something to, that went a little thinner. So one of our emphasis uh, is looking at dry matter intake, uh, looking at that number. So there's a, there's a point that I have a, a range that uh, when I'm selecting replacement heifers that uh, I've got a cutoff point on the dry matter intake. How, how did you get that information? That's, you can't look at them and tell. I know that, right? <laughs> right. Well, we have started several years ago turning in, we take tissue DNA sample and turn in, and then they become part of the uh, analyzed at Zoetis and become part of the Leachman database, and we get uh, uh, all kinds of uh, EPDs and information back. Up next. There's a lot of things that we can manage. And those are the things that we try real hard to put effort into. Lee takes a close look at how ranch labor interacts with convenience traits and affect cow-calf profitability. When the American Rancher continues, stay with us. Welcome back to the American Rancher. Genetics expert and seed stock producer Lee Leachman is discussing how to balance three important challenges to profitability in cow-calf production. In this segment, Lee tackles the challenge of how genetics affects ranch labor costs and convenience traits. Every rancher is talking about the challenge of getting labor to help run the operation. Uh, we're, you know, we're really good at being the owner and, and putting our footprint around the place, but we got to hire some people in to help us. It's harder and harder today. And so we're looking at how do we how do we run the same number of cows with less labor or how do we run more cows with the same amount of labor? And, and the key to that really is that we have cattle that don't cause problems. In the seed stock business, at Leachman Cattle at least, we call those convenience traits, right? Now, you may not get paid for them, but they make a huge difference day to day because what takes up all our time? It's, it's, it's handling the problems, right, that come up. We we have all these issues, right? We got to go doctor that calf. We got to help that animal calf. We got that cow that's wild and doesn't want to take her calf. We've got a bad udder, and maybe we got to put the calf on a on a on a on a tee. We got bad footed cattle. You know, just that's just going to cause us to cull them, or or even worse, to trim them. And so there are all these convenience traits that are a big problem. And at Leachman Cattle, we've we've decided, you know, we're going to try to measure every one of those. And we're going to calculate and predict an EPD on every one of them. So we work very closely with Zoetis to calculate these genetic predictions. They're genomically enhanced. And we have EPDs for calving ease, disposition, udder quality, and feed score. Now, you say, well, that's all we need is more EPDs, Lee. The catalog's already complicated. Well, we've made it really simple, okay? If you want calving ease, you buy the bulls with three, four, and five stars on calving ease. If you want to really improve the disposition in your herd, buy the four and five disposition star bulls. You want to improve udders, same story. Four and five star udders will, will make a big improvement in your herd. And one that we've just added this year, four and five star feet. These are the bulls that not only have really good feet themselves, but when we look at the genetics of their DNA and all their relatives, and we've, we've taken hoof, you know, hoof shape scores on thousands and thousands of animals. That EPD, those stars predict whether you're going to have trouble or not. And so, you know, if you're in one of these wetter climates where the soil's softer and, and you're having trouble with either bulls falling out of bed or, or even worse, cows growing longer toes, you know, come by these bulls that genetically, not just phenotypically, right, genetically are going to produce offspring that are better on that trait. Joining me on the program now is our good friend, Gary Rowland. And Gary has served, he's worn many hats at Leachman Cattle. He's uh, been a director of our semen division. He's been a longtime customer for our genetics. And he also does a lot of consulting for other ranchers in uh, Kansas and has also been in the seed stock business himself. Thanks for joining us today, Gary. Yeah, thanks for having me, Lee. Gary, I know that uh, when you work with these commercial ranches, a big issue today is that they've got to have systems in place 
to help that ranch run smoothly. Can you can you talk about how you think about that, Gary, and, and what it means to kind of help these ranches uh, get in a place where everything happens in a rhythm, I think you'd said. Sure. Uh, the right place to start, I think we all need to know that we have to have plans. Plans can be simple and they can be intricate and they can be short range and long range, but the reality is that having plans that have merit to the, the goals and vision and the potential of the of the ranch are critical. And then we think that they have to have a system that we build to go into place to be able to make best use of those plans and to keep that that ranch on a direct path. And I know Gary, um, in your own operation, I mean, you've dealt with the struggles of having labor. I, I know that your son is uh, doing some things that he's really excited about off the ranch, but as you see these cattle interacting with the challenges on the ranch, how important is it to have cattle that are conven full of convenience traits and kind of problem free? Yeah, I think when you talk about that, you really start off with just the efficiencies of production, the efficiencies of day to day and and how they carry into long term profitability. Um, you know, things change. You know, there's a lot of things that that on a ranching operation we cannot manage or can't manage it well. But there's a lot of things that we can manage. And those are the things that we try real hard to put effort into and try to learn how to use those tools accurately. So from the labor standpoint, you know, uh, asking our, our, the labor, whether it's you and your wife or your kids or, or, you know, whoever it is, asking them to do things above and beyond what they're capable of doing well uh, is a recipe for disaster. Uh, uh, relationally, it's a, 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 a potentially a disaster also. So, Gary, as you guys make a ranch plan and, and you look at replacement rate, um, how does replacement heifer selection and success on breeding and calving, how does that play into the whole system of the ranch and the ranch labor and the profitability? Well, Lee, it's a major center for either doing something really well or doing something really wrong. And so much of that comes back to that planning and having systems in place to be able to, to make those, those plans come true. Um, it, it most of the time becomes a big problem because we don't always uh, plan for it as well as we should. We always hope the best, but we don't always plan the best. And when we get to that point, we think we're caught off guard and we make some decisions that, that aren't particularly accurate in terms of proper animal health and, and, uh, and, and the ability to make the most profit out of this particular cycle. So I think it's a, it's a huge thing to uh, make sure that we manage these things well and it all starts with genetics. The, every one of these things we've talked about start with planning the genetic side of what affects these traits. After the break. You know, other than the things that all happen that you have no control over, we really don't have any issue. Lee examines the key driver to cow-calf profitability. Don't miss the next segment. You're watching The American Rancher. Stay with us. Welcome back to The American Rancher. We've discussed how genetics affects feed costs and ranch labor. In this segment, Lee takes a close look at reproduction, the key driver to cow-calf profitability. Increasingly, we have commercial ranchers contact us and say that, you know, with the size of their cows and the cows getting more and more straight bred, that they're struggling to get 93 plus percent of those cows bred in a 60 plus or minus day breeding season. And, and you know, all that is, is a real challenge today. And the good news is we've got, I think the most powerful tool 
we've ever seen in the beef cattle industry, and it's called our fertility EPD. And this EPD is calculated by Zoetis on our database on 1.4 million animals, um, literally hundreds of thousands of cows and their calving records. And it's looking at how many calves on average those cows have in their productive lifetime. The next step was trying to figure out what that's worth. Obviously, if you're running 100 cows and they breed up 90% instead of 80%, you're going to have more calves the coming year out of the same number of cows. So that's a big value. The other effect is if you've got that bigger open percentage, that's one more cow or several more cows that you have to replace with heifers, and that costs you a lot of money. You have to pay for that heifer calf. You have to pay to put her into production. It's a big deal. And it really drives your cost of production. And so when we asked, again, the folks at uh, Texas A&M Kingsville to come up with a prediction of what this fertility EPD means financially for a cow-calf producer, and the data was, was just shocking. This graph shows how at the low end, those low fertility bulls are literally costing you hundreds of dollars per cow per year because of the failure to stay in production. At the high end, of course, you know, it's diminishing returns, right? You get up to, to 87 or 90 or 92. There's not much left above that. There's a limit to how high we can get. But by selecting for those high fertility EPDs, by selecting those bulls that are four and five star fertility, you're going to increase the fertility in your herd. Now, you might be in an environment where you don't struggle with that. But if you're on Western ranges, and especially in the dry years we've been having, I think most would agree that the breed up's a challenge. If you've been struggling with that, I urge you to consider two things. First, buying bulls that have high fertility EPDs to produce daughters that are going to be better for your herd. And then secondly, within the calf crop you already have, you can do the inherit DNA test from Zoetis and it will tell you the potential fertility of those replacement heifers and allow you to keep the heifers that are better on fertility. It's the greatest tool we've ever had because we all know we select these replacement heifers visually. I mean, you wouldn't come to my bull sale and pick bulls visually without the EPDs, but you're picking your heifers without EPDs. For just the, the retail test for, for inherits $33, um, we offer it to our customer base with a rebate of $10, so it's down to $23. So for just $23, we can help you identify the heifers that are least luck likely to be productive and to keep the better ones. Of course, the other strategy is to introduce hybrid vigor into your herd. If you're like a lot of ranchers, you may have been using Angus bulls or, or, or straight bred bulls right along now and breeding up your herd so there's less and less hybrid vigor. And we know that's a great thing. We know that the you know, Angus are, are a common denominator in all cow herds, and they, they really have great performance and, and great figures. But as you breed up to Angus, you lose hybrid vigor. And by using our composite bulls, you get all the great things that Angus offer, but you get the hybrid vigor that helps with the breed up, that helps with the longevity, and, and produces cows that are more valuable. Joining us now on the program is Matt Jones from Midland, South Dakota. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Thanks for having me, Lee. Matt, you were telling me um, about your preg check this year and, and what you're seeing in your young females. Can you share a little bit of that with our viewers? Yeah, so uh, with the drought thing, we had decided to move our calving window uh, from a 45-day breeding season to a 30-day. And uh, this year when we preg tested, uh, we bred up at 90% in 30 days and three of those were two-year-olds. Matt, you were one of the first guys or, or probably one of the most focused guys at going into the proven AI sires and picking high maternal bulls to produce the kind of cows you wanted. And I know you produced a bunch of daughters of capitalists. Uh, tell people about that decision and, and how you're liking it. Well, it, it all come down to cost. Um, I can't afford to buy a, a bull like capitalist to that or enough of them, let's say like him 
to get the results I'm getting by AIing to him. You know, it is a lot of work, a lot of planning, but when you see the results and how it's improved my cow herd, it's worth every bit of the work. They got a feminine look to them. They make really good mothers. They got good udders. Um, they got great feet. They're just attractive and they, you know, they're, they're pretty trouble free really. Um, you know, other than the things that all happen that you have no control over, we really don't have any issues with them. We just wish we had more of them. That's great. That's a success story for sure. Well, Matt, thank you for joining us on the show today and uh, good luck with the uh, upcoming calving season. Well, thank you for joining us on the program today. We hope you grab some strategies or tidbits that can help you overcome these big challenges because we know it's a challenging time for cow-calf producers. We also want to take a moment to invite you to attend our upcoming March bull and female sale. It'll be held in Fort Collins, Colorado on March uh, 26th. That's a Sunday and March 27th, Monday. On Sunday, we'll be offering about 250 replacement quality heifers, all characterized for all the EPDs we've been talking about today and obviously selected to give you more profitability on the ranch and in the feedlot. We'll also be offering 500 of our stabilizer bulls and they'll sell on Monday the 27th, starting at 10 a.m. They'll sell one at a time in catalog order. The videos are up on Superior Livestock. You can go there and see them. And of course, you can uh, go onto our website at leachman.com and sign up for a catalog. We'll mail you one. We'd love to have you get that information. If you'd like one of our salespeople to contact you about some of the things you've heard today, we'd love to reach out to you and uh, see if our products and services are right for you. So we'd sure love for you to join us. We are going to be offering uh, some special incentives for uh, first-time buyers and people that come in person. You know, we all got used to staying home during COVID, and uh, we'd sure like you to think about coming out to Fort Collins, Colorado, and joining Leachman Cattle of Colorado for the uh, weekend events. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed and learned something from today's show. To find out more about us, visit our website, theamericanrancher.com, or connect with us on Facebook or YouTube. I'm Pam Minnick for our entire American Rancher team. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.